Good morning. We're going to follow on in the previous video. We've installed the APB software. Now we'll spend some time looking at what we can do with it. Uh, we'll open up the application and create a new program. We use a 12 IO point, 8 input, 8 4 output. We select the DC one because we're going to want to use some analog capabilities. So we'll click on that. We'll open up, it shows multiple networks. Again, these are just pages within your program. Uh, for the simple application, we'll get by with a single page. Well, we want to take a look at a motor control system. So we're going to put in a couple of inputs here. Two inputs and an output. And uh, we want to look at some combinatorial logic to begin with. So we'll add in a an AND gate. All we want to do is say if uh, this input and that input's on, then we want to turn on the output. In conventional ladder logic, we'd show that as a series of contacts, two in series. Um, if both contacts are closed, then the output would be on. The OR gate, which is very similar, is um, uh, from a ladder logic point of view, would be two contacts in parallel. If either one is on, it would be turning on the output. Well, for our AND gate, we will connect one of the inputs to this point here. We'll connect this input to that input. We see that we have an unused input on our AND gate. So we click on the box, open up the property. And we see that the input count can range from 3 up to 8. Each AND gate can have up to 8. Uh, inputs. Uh, minimum is 3. We're not using the third input, so we need to set that to a default value. For an AND gate, we'd set that high, so it's always going to be on. And we'll give, we won't bother giving this a name. Let's just leave it as a as an AND gate. The input, though, we want to call that uh, the start button. And this one will just leave as, um, we'll call that no fault. So we want to be able to set it up so if there's no fault and the start button's pushed, then this output will go to this point. Now the output point is currently an M0. M would be one of the internal memory registers. We want to change that to be a physical output. In this case, I'll put zero, and we'll call that motor. And if we go up to our simulate button, we can now simulate a very simple circuit. If we click this on, and click this on, we turn the output off, on. Down on the I.O. bar, we see the status of all the I.O. points. And if we click the fold on, off, as it mean, uh, it shows that the output goes off, and if we turn it off, it goes off as well. I will point out that with the video capture software running, this screen down here updates rel relatively slowly on your application. You see it change almost instantly. Well, the uh, simple motor starter is okay, but Quite often what we'll do in a motor case is have a latching relay. So when it latches on, it will continue to run until it's turned off. So what I'm going to do is go over and look at some of the um, simple digital um, types of um, capabilities. We see that we have the standard t set of timers. We have a latch reset latch. So we will put that down as your motor latch, and we'll delete this signal, move this up, and connect the output through. Um, over here we see that this is the set, and now we don't, uh, we need to add a, some way to turn this off, so we'll go back to our simple IOs, and we'll move an IO point over here, and set that to the output, uh, the reset. So now when we run our simulator, again we turn it on and um, release the start switch, hit the off switch, and it turns off. 
You'll also notice that if we turn it on and don't release the start switch, when we hit the reset or the off, it, uh, the reset takes precedence over the set, and so it will still turn the motor off. So we now have a motor running with a uh, kind of conventional start-stop capability. Quite often with the motor, you'll find that you want a time on and time off delay. So we'll break this connection. Again, go back to our uh, timer capabilities. We see we have something called time on, time off. We'll move one of those in. And uh, the trigger is on the top. The bottom is always a reset on these function blocks. So we'll connect this to like this. Look at the properties here and see that we can actually uh, set the on delay. So let's set that to three seconds and we'll set the off delay to two seconds. We'll give this a name of uh, motor delay. We'll save that. The one other thing we want to do is uh, we won't be using the reset in this situation. We'll set that to a low level, meaning it never gets activated. Okay, so now if we run our simulator, we see that we've added in our preset on delay or off delay and our running time. So if we hit start, hit the no fault, we see it start running up. When it gets to three seconds, it turns the motor on. If we hit the off, when it gets to one second, we turn the motor off. So we have a simple timed on, timed off motor. Well, as luck would have it, this fault is currently a digital input. What we really wanted to do is have that look uh, tied into a uh, seal detect on a submersible pump. That's going to give us an analog input. When the seal leaks, it will uh, reduce the resistance, and that becomes an analog signal into a controller. So we're going to uh, replace this point by deleting it. And we'll take a look at some of our analog capabilities. First of all, we need to change the input type. We've been looking at digital. We've also got analog inputs and outputs. And we have something called a data register. Data registers are used to store internal counter and timer values. Uh, we won't be using that in this application, but we do need an analog input. So we'll bring that over. And we'll look at its properties. Uh, we don't want it. Uh, tied into uh, the analog zero because point zero is the digital. So we'll change this to analog input one. And we'll again call that no fault. Or in this case, we'll call it seal detect. And we have to do something with the analog. If we look at our analog capabilities. We um, see that we have something called an analog threshold trigger. So we'll put one of those in, connect the input through, connect the output, and go in and look at its properties. With the analog threshold, we discover that we have um, two, uh, two uh, aspects as far as gain and offset. This allows us to linearize your signal. In this case, we'll leave them just a flat gain of one. We have a on uh, threshold and an off threshold. And these act differently depending on whether this is greater or less than the off. We we'll set off and we'll set this one at five. We we'll set the threshold off at 7.5. We'll give this a name of uh, COD seal threshold and we won't be using the reset so again we'll set that to an inactive low and we'll save our no application run the simulator hit the start button this time when we select our analog input we see that we have a slider and so we've got a on threshold of 5 and off threshold of 7.5 as we slide our slider up and we hit 5, we see that the input turns on. If we continue to slide it up, when it hits 7.5, it turns it off. 
So that isn't exactly what we wanted in this situation. It gives us a band of valid values that uh, we turn it on and off. But what we really want to do is uh, have it uh, act slightly differently. So we'll go into the property section. We'll change this to uh, off at 5. We want to turn it on at 7.5. Now when we run our simulator, and we hit this. We see that as we increase it, nothing happens when we hit 5. But when we hit 7.5, it turns on. We stay on until we reduce that signal down below 5. It turns off. So we've now got a hysteresis effect on our analog input. The um, motor starter is now pretty much running. We um, we have the capability of starting the motor and stopping the motor based on our timer and the seal detect will allow us to detect if the seal leaks in the pump and disable the starting function. That completes the demo. Uh, we've given a bit of an idea on the types of blocks that we can put in, the type of debugging we have on both the analog and digital timers. We'll have another demo uh, video. Next one we'll look at some of the other capabilities of the I.O. Uh, as you can see there's a wide range of uh, different function blocks available for both the analog and for the digital and uh, combinatorial logic. We cover all the basic and wars, inversion, exclusive or etc. Thank you very much and if you're interested please take a look at the next video. Thank you.